My name is Landry Long. I directed My Brother's Keeper, which is a film about a brother relationship and how an older brother essentially is fighting for his life, not only to provide for himself, but to mainly provide for his younger brother. Inspiration for this story came from, you know, at Taylor, it's four years of us waiting to take this class, essentially. You know, we start at, at the lowest level of audio production and all those things, and you're, you're gearing up for your narrative film, which is senior year, and that's the, kind of the last big capstone project. And for me, it was something to where I thought about it for several years, especially after seeing films previously that had been in that narrative class. And for me, I wanted to take an angle that I hadn't seen a lot from those films in the past, something that was a little bit more like almost on kind of the documentary sort of way that it's being told um, and something that is, is definitely more raw and more emotional um, than things that I had seen in the past. And one of my biggest inspirations came from a short film that was called The Cage that was done uh, by the neighborhood, I think, I believe they're called the Neighborhood Film Company. And I saw that early on in my college um, years. And it was, it's the best short film I've ever seen. It's, it's where I took all the inspiration, a lot of the inspiration for this story and how I wanted it to be told. Number one, the acting was just as raw as it possibly could be. Um, and I think, a lot of that came from the fact that the people who were in this had never acted before. And that was another trick that I took from, from the short film that I saw um, called The Cage to where I think a lot of that was just enabling us to get really raw emotions and raw experiences. Um, and I wanted to ultimately keep dialogue at a, as much of a minimum as possible, just knowing that I, I see a lot of instances where, especially in college, you know, it's writing is, by far the toughest part of the whole process when you're young and when you're trying to figure out um, how to make a film. So I didn't want it to come across as, you know, any way corny or cheesy or overwritten or, what, or any of those things. So I wanted to keep the writing um, to a minimum and let this story speak for itself. But then also when there was dialogue on screen for it to be super impactful and for it to, to pack a punch wherever it could, as opposed to just trying to water it down throughout the whole time. So with this sermon, I met with our pastor weeks before we started filming and we met at Starbucks. It was me and my producer, Jackie. And I could just tell right away that there was a lot of things that lined up perfectly for him being in it. Um, there was a situation to where I was given a contact um, to get to him and actually the person who I had contacted to get to him had passed away like a week before I had met with, with this, with this preacher. And there was just a lot of things where the, you know, he told me the story of when they talked that he really wanted the guy I reached out to specifically reached out to the preacher that we had, because he knew that he would deliver a really good performance and would also just go beyond, you know, being in a film, he would, spread a positive message about the word of Christ and, and what it means to never give up. So when I met with him, I had heard that whole story and was just like, wow, this, I think this is more than like, you know, this is like a divine setup. And with, with him, I mean, we were in the church in our setting. And when we met at that Starbucks, I pretty much just like gave him an outline idea of what I wanted him to get across and, you know, let him know that, like, his, his sermon will be the backbone for this whole story. Um, and I didn't want to put any limitations on him as far to say, I want you to say this, or I want you to say that, or, or here's your script, and I want you to just read it, because I knew, again, that we would lose a lot of authenticity if, if that was the case. So he pretty much came up with his whole own script under the, the very brief guidelines that I gave him, and then he ran with it. And I mean, we, we filmed that scene in that church and pretty much just had one guy on, on our A cam filming him from a few different angles and just let him do his thing. And, and also beyond that, he brought his own congregation to this scene, which changed everything. You know, if like we would have just brought in random people, there would have been 
no chemistry like there was with him and his own congregation. Cause even though they understood that it was, you know, a film that was, we were shooting, they were still super into his message and, and believed in him cause they'd been listening to him, you know, for as long as they'd been going to his church. So yeah, the, him allowing himself to have that chemistry with them and then also giving him the space to say whatever he wanted allowed for really, I believe that sermon to carry the whole story. And again, that goes back to, I wanted to find also another medium as far as dialogue goes that wasn't just talking heads on screen back and forth. I wanted to be almost there for it to be like a third or second layer of, you know, of that piece that allowed it to tell the story in a different way as opposed to just characters talking on screen. So I'll go into a little bit of the background to provide this framework. Um, but the younger boy in our film was a contact from somebody that I had met the previous year. And I actually used him in another project and his two other brothers. So he's, he's a middle child of two other brothers. And so I reached out to, to his father to, to see if, if he could be in the film. And to be completely honest, I was intending to reach out to his older brother. And then somewhere it got lost in translation that it was uh, the middle brother who, who was in our film. And I showed up to set that day thinking it was going to be the other brother. And it was the one who ended up being in our film. And, you know, you're in the middle of college. There's a lot of other things going on. You're trying so hard to make this project work. You just kind of got to roll with the punches at that point. You know, we could have like just sat around and, and taken it and been like, well, what do we do now? But I think it was the biggest blessing in disguise because knowing how well he did and he was, he was so nervous to start. And as we just kind of warmed up to him, he warmed up to us. And I think it made um, for a really great performance. It's really hard working with kids and on any level of film. I don't, you know, I don't think it really matters if it's a Hollywood movie or if it's a, you know, a $100 short film. Kids are just um, not always the easiest to work with if they're not, you know, professionally trained. And he had no experience. Um, and again, I think that added to his overall performance. Um, but then with that too, Angelo, who is the main character in the film, had been a friend of mine for the past two or three years. We'd made some music together. Um, he'd been working on some other stuff with me, primarily in music. And I knew that he wanted to act, so, but I knew that he, again, didn't have a lot of experience. So I reached out to him for this. I had him send me a few, like, just tapes. We're supposed to, like, hold auditions for all of our actors. I just sent him, like, a, a section of the script. I was like, just send me something back so I can get just a feel. And he did, but then beyond that, too, I think just knowing him in his heart, he was able to connect with the young, his younger brother so well. Um, and he even kind of took it upon himself on, on um, set to make him feel comfortable. And right away, you know, like started talking to him, started warming him up. And by the end, they were super good friends. So, you know, if, if you have somebody who comes on set and he's just focused on doing his own thing and doesn't even want to make that chemistry work, it's going to be tough but I think one of his first priorities was making sure that he was comfortable and they gelled so well together. And I mean, like one of my favorite things that is in the whole film is at the very end when they're playing basketball and he like goes in and misses the layup. I mean, we were honestly just messing around at that point. I think we'd finished filming for the day and that kind of just made it as, you know, last ending cut scene or whatever it was, but I think it showed their relationship really well that they were you know just in their element playing basketball they both love basketball and they had connected so well and that was so largely due to Angelo making him feel comfortable yeah that that last scene was stressful like you said just because there were so many different moving pieces and I think that was kind of the accumulation of it being our biggest scene at the end was just knowing that there's so many different pieces at play um, we got really lucky with the location. It was a boxing ring in Indianapolis that was only going to be set up for like two more weeks. They let us film for free. I mean, they're just the nicest people. Um, and yeah, it's as far as choreography goes and everything, you know, we're working within like a $750 budget constraint of being 
in this narrative class and keeping that in mind, you know, we don't have the money to hire a, a fight choreographer, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, you can only wear so many hats when you're, when you're in a project, whether you're directing, producing, or whatever it is. I don't think really anybody had the time to think about that. Um, so, you know, we showed up and kind of just worked within our constraints from like, yeah, let's, let's shoot a few different angles, you know, see, see if we can cut things together. Um, it's so funny just knowing, you know, we filmed that almost what seems like two years ago, just coming like a year and a half ago. And just from learning, you know, I spent some time out in Los Angeles to wrap up my degree uh, with an internship to, to graduate college and felt like I learned a lot out there. And there's just so many things now knowing I would do differently for this film. You know, it's like hard for me, honestly, to watch it and be and be like, man, well, I don't know what I was thinking, what I, you know, but I think we all go through that. And I think that's, it's, it's a good uh, growth thing. Cause you don't want to watch that two years later and be like, man, that's the best work that I've ever made. So um, yeah, that I would say that day was just the accumulation of a lot of moving pieces with getting extras there too and everything. And, you know, you always have the idea of what you want it to look like in your head always turns out differently, you know, good and bad vice both both sides of the coin um but i would definitely want to give a lot of credit to our editor whose name is grant oldham um and i feel like you know he had a very limited amount of time to put this project together to get it done in time for class and i was just so impressed with how he was able to kind of interpret some things and and he had some really good ideas to you know initially it was kind of supposed to be like a full-fledged fight and that was the last scene it turned it out to be more kind of like a montage sort of thing as, you know, the story was explained and, and the pastor was talking over the dialogue and the background and everything. And I loved how he interpreted that. And I think that it allowed us to cover up maybe some of the mistakes that we made on that day of whether it was, you know, not getting enough people there, which was so hard. We, we tried so hard to get so many people there and I think we did a pretty good job. Um, but yeah, I, I think mainly it's just, you know, you see that almost a year and a half later and you're like, oh man, um, I would do so many things differently. But I would say overall, just knowing that there are so many different moving parts and there are so many things at play, I was very proud of the team and how they pulled it together at the end.